moose had a problem, a horrible, hairy, prickly problem. It grew right below his nostrils and just above his upper lip, a moustache. Now, not a few spare hairs or a shy little stubble, no mere weak wandering whiskers on the upper lip of this moose, no siree. Moose had a big, bushy, bristly, mighty moustache. But a moustache that was a burly, surly, mangy mess, and it itched a lot. If you could see Leah read this story, it would be a much different experience. Her hair is in a ponytail, her glasses slide down her nose. She blinks under the flickering fluorescent lights, and clearly behind her are prison bars. The magic quality of that story is her voice, and that is what Story Chain focuses on. The sentence that you just heard is shaped as a roller coaster path on the page that invites the voice to conduct a jazz like rhythm or cadence. Moustache. When a word is written big, we yell it. When a word is written small, we whisper. When a word is written weird, we say it weird. <laughs> and onomatopoeias, we just say them all day long. Kapow. Drip. 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 My mother read to me as a kid, and she was very good at it. She was really into the idea of stories, but she was never theatrical. She would always say, don't let your voice get in the way. Well, her literacy intervention or literacy sponsorship for me is and was not available for the millions of families affected by mass incarceration. The Department of Justice and the National Institute of Corrections reported that over five million children at some point have had a mother or father involved in the criminal justice system. That's basically, in a nutshell, saying 7% of all secondary school children in the United States. We started Story Chain in 2014 and the end product has always been the same. An MP3 player with recorded stories from mom and dad, so it's custom made, given to the child of the incarcerated with the caregiver at the library closest to where they live. We started at the Dayton Correctional Institute with seven mothers, a six-week program, we chose books, we had book talks, we read out loud, we elocuted our voices, we shared, we critiqued with other volunteers, and once we got to that point and you're ready to record, we would make our own sound spaces in the jail, in the prisons, and that's a whole other TED Talk. <laughs> the time they have to work on their voice is the time we give them, and that's why we spend weeks and weeks in the rehearsal process, and the volunteers, oh my gosh, they're amazing, hand-picked professionals, DJs, Luke Dennis, um, politicians, people who have a strong voice for the community they represent. Unlike other programs, we don't use video. If a child is gonna get lost, in the magical story of a moose with a moustache, then watching mom on video reading that story is not going to help. The voices from mothers and fathers, well rehearsed and well structured, are poured directly into the child's ear. Golden sounds, golden connections, tangible, visceral, and achievable. <laughs> They're like little kittens drinking sonic milk. 
And we set this all up in a way where it's not really a rehearsal, but it's more like a conversation. We have done so much work with folks that are incarcerated inside. David is one of our wonderful, wonderful folks who work with us. And David is a grandfather. And this is his recording of his story to his four granddaughters. I don't know how this big bad wolf things got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault. Wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think that you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. Another client that we had, Megan, it's a very willing and eager student, but we were worried because her reading level was much less than her son, who was 14, Garrett. His reading level was very high. Matter of fact, the last book he read was The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So I was a bit taken back on how he responded when I showed him the books that his mother had read, Curious George and Hop on Pop. But he paid no mind. He simply wanted to hear his mother's voice. He said to me that his mother is not really a very serious person, that even when she's yelling, he can hear her sly smile. So when he hears the MP3 player, he can hear her sly smile. Storychain has the capacity to do all sorts of things. We, we easily complement the drug-appointed programs that assist and treat addiction as a mental health issue. And to that end, the Greene County Sheriff's Department has helped us out tremendously by giving us book cabinets. One of our clients has said that reaching into the book cabinets to choose for his daughter is like reaching for a new opportunity. We also are able to spread our wings in so many other areas as well with our stories, and they have benefited from these programs tremendously. One of them being uh, the senior homes, halfway houses, and programs for the developmental disabled. This is Officer Brown with Javon. They've known each other at Beaver Creek High School, and Officer Brown actually now records social stories for Javon and his buddies at the group home in Xenia. And let me just riff on Officer Brown just for a second. This guy is the kind of guy that will come out of his car and carry your groceries to the door and start mowing your lawn. He is an amazing guy. And it said to me eight years ago, I would say the absolute opposite. But I'm saying this now, I love cops. Cops have done everything for this program. We would not be here if it wasn't for the wonderful service of the Greene County uh, Sheriff's Department, um, the late uh, Gene Fisher, may he rest in peace, and Major Keller have been tremendous for what we do. Absolutely tremendous. I'd like to leave this uh, stage <laughs> right now. I <laughs> Thank you for being nervous with me. I really appreciate that. <laughs> really appreciate that. This is a little audio of Krista, who recorded her voice uh, at the Montgomery County Jail. She was on the floor when she did it. Lions sit on irons and parrots sit on carrots. That doesn't sound very comfortable, said the frog. It's not about being comfortable, said the cat. It's about doing the right thing. When Krista did those recordings, she gave me a letter that she addressed to Storychain. I am an inmate, a recovering addict with a rap sheet and a long list of mistakes. However, I am also a devoted mother with a drive to do the right for myself and my children. This program has been the light at the end of the tunnel for me. 
Two times a week, I leave my cell. I pick up a kid's book. I take on the voice of an evil queen. I sail away on a pirate ship. I have a conversation with a disorderly frog, and I trade my Montgomery County outfit for a ballroom gown. Suddenly, I am no longer an inmate. I am inside the world of possibilities, my daughter's possibilities. I've made mistakes, but I am the writer of the story, and only I can create a happy ending. Krista got out of jail and then died four months after the date of this letter from an overdose. She leaves behind two daughters, and they can hear their mother's voice for the rest of their lives.